The comparison, which is more apposite, is ISIS and Hamas. They are both nihilistic yes, terror groups absolutely. intent on killing as many Jewish people and others as they can possibly kill. And you, you, can't, know what? I'm you, gonna can't, do you can't get I'm peace gonna do with so people like that. Absolutely. You know what? I'm going to do something that nobody done on your television. Mm. You know what I'm going to do I'm on your episode? I'm going to do I am going to pretend that I'm an Israeli citizen. I'm going to put my, my, myself in the, in the place of an Israeli settler in the kaputs. And I want to speak to my prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, I have voted for you because you have promised us peace and prosperity and security. On the 7th of October, those son of bitches Hamas, they went into the fence that is regularly heavy, heavily guarded. Usually if there's like a, a, a dove that comes close to it, it will be shot. Mm -hmm. Those people went in and they went for six hours before IDF forces was deployed, killing our friends, our families, kidnapping our grandmothers and babies, and went in. I want to ask you, Mr. Prime Minister, after you have fractured the Israeli community and you have fucked our courts, our Supreme Courts, what are you doing with the money being given to you to the United States? Also, you are carpet bombing Gaza with absolutely no regard to our hostages, our people. I heard a rumor in the kibbutz that you're doing that as an, you let that happen to, as an excuse to carpet bomb Gaza, so you push them into Sinai. And I didn't believe that. That's like, not my prime minister. He can never do that. And then I watched an interview for Danny Ayelon. He was your chief advisor. He was also the Israeli ambassador to the United States. And you know what he said, Mr. Prime Minister? He said that the solution for those Palestinians is to go into a vast land of Sinai and live into 10 cities temporarily, huh? temporarily, wink, wink, until we build Gaza again, and then we invite you back. Ah, so we've seen this movie before. So yani, and, I, and when I saw this, I couldn't explain to my fellows in the kibbutz how come our Israeli government is trading human lives for another piece of land? So as an Israeli citizen, I need to hold my Israeli government accountable. And as an American citizen, I want to know all of these money that we are giving to Israel. We're giving them $4 billion every year. Joe Biden said it's the best investment they ever, America ever done. Well, I, if I am in the, in the place of Joe Biden, I would say, sorry, don't speak uh, yet. I, I, would, I would say, if I was Joe Biden, I would go down and whisper in the ears of Netanyahu and tell them, I hate bad investments. They haunt me, you know, like Littlefinger in Game of Thrones. But the thing is, the thing is, this is the problem. Israel always victimizes itself, and I have never seen a victim putting their oppressor under siege and bombing them 24-7. Israel wants you to believe that they are the victim. Is, dealing with Israel is so difficult. It's like being in a relationship with a narcissistic psychopath. He fucks you up, and then he makes you think it's your fault. All right, you Bassem. look at Israel as Superman, but they're really homelander. Wallah, they are like they are, you, you, they are shooting Bassem, fish in the barrel, thing. and they are annoyed with the splashes. Bassem, I want to say two things. One, if you could just slightly mind your language, we are uncensored. But if you keep swearing, I, I'm very sorry. We I have am, to am, apologize am to viewers. You so may sorry. be offended by that. I apologize. Um, but I understand I passions run high, so let's not get too bogged down about. The old swear I, I apologize word. to the um, viewers. I apologize to the viewers for my language. I, my second question the, is this: the, after the, the, the sight of, uh, of dead civilians, after the break, we have the managing director of the Daily Wire, which is Ben Shapiro's company. We were going to interview him on his own, but he's happy to come on and talk with you directly if you are prepared to stay. Well, of course, I I, I can stay, but again, I am fuck this. I am in a disadvantage, and I would like to have my space to respond. OK, we'll come back after the break. I do, Stay I, there, I, Bassem. I, 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 because, because, because here's the thing. There's Bassem, two things we, I we've got to go to a break. Before, all right? When we come back from the break, we'll be you and Jeremy Boring my, my, from my, the Daily Wire. My, 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 I have news. We're taking a short break, Bassem. I'll be back. Welcome back to Uncensored. For more on the situation in Israel, I'm joined now by the CEO and co-founder of the Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro's partner, Jeremy Boring. Uh, Jeremy, thank you very much indeed for joining me. I'm sorry we demoted you earlier to mere MD, you are the CEO and co-founder. Uh, you know Ben Shapiro better than anyone, really. Uh, I did a big interview with Ben, obviously, the other night, um, which went around the world um, and has sparked a big reaction, including from uh, our guest, Bassam Youssef, who's still with us. First of all, you've been listening to, to Bassam and what he's been saying. What's your response? Well, first of all, I make it a point not to speak for Ben Shapiro. He's got a 20 IQ points on me and speaks for a living professionally, mm -hmm. so he's much better prepared to defend himself. But as his business partner, as his best friend, I, I do feel like I have to respond to the things that Bassam was just saying. 
uh, first of all, the question of how many sons of bitches have to be killed in order to end this conflict, I, mean, I suppose that the answer is as many of them as it takes. That doesn't mean that I or Ben or any decent person in their right mind is happy with the killing of civilians. Uh, I posted at the very beginning of this conflict that a, a woman or a child blown apart in Gaza is just as tragic as a Jewish baby killed in one of the settlements. That doesn't mean that Israel's actions and the actions of Hamas are morally equivalent. You know, the tragedy is the tragedy, but the moral equivalency is nonsense. If you if you entered Israel with the express purpose of targeting and murdering civilians with your own hands in cold blood, that is not comparable to Israel bombing targets in the Gaza Strip and killing civilians as a terrible, tragic consequence. War war is terrible. War is an awful thing. That's why decent people don't lightly engage in war and why Hamas should not have incited this war. You know, we can talk about the history of the Israeli conflict. I'm not a professional political commentator. I'm a, I'm a CEO. I'm a screenwriter. Uh, and I'm certainly not Ben Shapiro. I'm not here to discuss the history of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but we all saw what happened on October 7th. And the idea that Israel was not going to react severely to that or that Israel should not react severely to that is ludicrous. And Jeremy, the idea let me ben ask you, the idea that Ben Shapiro question. should be a moderating voice, mm. that Ben Shapiro should be, what, saying, no, Israel should not respond mm. in this situation, that's nonsense. No, let me ask you, though, Jeremy, what, I mean, the question which I think is the big question, what is a proportionate response to that outrage on October the 7th, which is the worst attack on Jewish people since the Holocaust? Uh, what is proportionate, if it's true, as reports well, are suggesting tonight, that there may have been a hospital hit by a, an Israeli strike and up to 500 people or more have died, that would yeah. seem to me, if that is verified, and it's not verified yet, it, you know, we don't know exactly what has happened other than there's been a hit on this hospital. But if that is verified to have been an Israeli strike, that will strike many people as disproportionate. Certainly. But first of all, I don't know what a proportionate response is or why we would want it. I suppose a proportionate response would be for 3,000 Israelis to go through the fence, gun down innocent Palestinian women and children, burn their bodies, burn them alive, take hostages, rape their women. No one wants a proportionate response. No, no moral person could possibly call for a proportionate response. The purpose of war is to defeat your enemy. The West has, in my lifetime, forgotten the purpose of war because the true cost of war is so terrible. Mm. The last time the West engaged in war and won it was World War II, and they did it through incredible brutality. They did it by bringing their enemies to heal. That is not a thing to that's not a thing to rah rah about. That's not a thing to look forward to. As I said, all decent people should avoid war. But I think the sort of lie of the post World War II, the post war consensus lie is that somehow war uh, in which you kill a bunch of people and don't secure victory is morally superior to war where you do secure victory. I would say that the only way to morally justify a war is to win it. Otherwise, your the very argument that brought you into the war, this enemy must be defeated, ends up being proven a lie. I mean, Afghanistan, I think ever, America had every right to go into Afghanistan. Uh, the Taliban was harboring Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda flew planes into buildings in the United States, killed thousands of our citizens, uh, brought the nation into untold agony, pain, and horror. America had every right morally to go in and destroy the Taliban and destroy al-Qaeda. Yeah, but I would argue, but the Taliban now, But the Taliban now rules well, in my, Afghanistan. That's my the point. war was not won. But that's my point, actually. I've done a column about this tonight uh, for The Sun here in the UK, which is mm -hmm. I, I was editor of a newspaper when the Iraq war happened. I... Uh, opposed it very aggressively as the editor of the recall. paper. Um, and sadly, we were borne out by events. It was a complete disaster, the Iraq war, in my view. It was illegally contested, I think. Um, and the consequences were appalling in terms of loss of life, a million people, in terms of ISIS being allowed to breed and create their merry hell around the world, in terms of complete dismantlement of, of Iraq itself as a, as a functioning country. Uh, and I think Afghanistan, again, 20 years of you know, attacking an enemy which is now running the country again seemed to me, again, to be kind of pointless. And I do wonder w whether Israel, in its blind fury, which I completely understand, has thought through the consequences of actually launching a full air, ground and sea offensive into Gaza as to actually what happens at the end of that. Well, I suppose Israel wasn't really given the opportunity to fully contemplate what the consequences of that action might be because Israel didn't instigate this war. This war was instigated by a horrible terrorist attack on Israel, and a state is put in a position where it has to respond. Now, 
one might argue that the very fact that Israel has yet to actually launch their ground invasion means that they are actually making a calculation about what the cost will be, what victory looks like. Any rational person, any decent person can engage in a conversation about what is the appropriate response for Israel. Of course they can. Uh, but this sort of moral equivalency thing, I don't think is a sign of decency to engage in a conversation okay. about moral equivalency. Let me bring uh, Basim back in. You've been listening to this, Basim. What's your response to what Jeremy's been saying? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the gentleman's name. It's Jeremy Boring. He's the chief executive of The Daily Wire and co-founder with Ben Shapiro of The Daily Wire. Hi, Jeremy. Please say hello to Ben Shapiro and please tell him that I do think he is the smartest person to ever walk the earth. Thank you so much. So as a response to Jeremy, uh, I, 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 I agree with everything you said. I mean, what is disproportionate? I mean, the, you, he just used the uh, examples from Second World War and America showing that civilian casualty is, uh, uh, I mean, I, I heard his voice. He was very sad. And he, as he was telling us, it is so inevitable to kill so many civilians because it's something that we cannot avoid. I hear the sadness in his voice. And I know that it's a very difficult decision to kill all of these civilians because that's for a higher cause. And I understand, but my question, I, I have two questions. The question is, how can you justify the killing in the West Bank where Hamas does not exist? And if the disproportionate response during the, over all of these years have actually worked, what will be new this time that did not happen before? I okay. just want to, that, 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 that was my question. Okay, that Basim, was my question. Uh, I'm going to Okay, I'm so, gonna so, so, so now, so so Basim, now, so now if to... I ask the question, can I, can I say something on my side? Well, a little you've, bit personal? No, Basim, with respect, a little you've bit had, personal? Basim, with respect, I gave you oh. half the show to have your side. Jeremy's had a lot less time. Uh, I'm going to oh, have to You want me on. to leave? Basim, I'm going to have stay? to, I'm going to have to let you go because we've been on there with you for 40 minutes oh, Okay, bye-bye. But listen, bye bye. bye I'd bye. like to talk to you again, bye and bye. thank you for joining the program. I appreciate it. Oh, by by, by the way, my, my my wife's family is is all right, and they sent us a house. It's it's bombed. It's beautiful. It's it's going to be a good uh, uh, like Halloween theme. So well, thank you. I'm very sorry for what your family are going through in Gaza, and I mean oh, that no. very sincerely. By the way, I don't know I, I don't know my I don't know him. By the way, I don't I haven't actually met them. They didn't even come to my wedding. They couldn't because they are stuck in Gaza. Okay. And she never saw them because, you know, Gaza is not a destination. Basim, I, as I say, I... We, we, we hear their voices. And it's, uh, they, they die. It's fine. It's I'm, fine. Basim, I wish your family all the very best. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate no, it. I, I, I don't. Thank you.